It's April Fools today, but hopefully there'll be no fools in this draft room coming up here. Of course, another big board draft coming up today. We're going to talk about two things. Number one, rookies who I think are going to be primed to smash a week one. Number two, Rasheed Rice is on the thumbnail now with the police car because he had a tremendous accident in the Dallas area uh, where he did go to college as well. Does seem like some potential issues afoot for him. Of course, we're not going to victory lap that one. It's a gross situation. We'll talk about it here. Of course, I'm already in a draft room here on Underdog. Back to a solo effort today. Of course, our guy Chunk the Deuce on Friday did a great job. See him in chat here. Uh, shout out to Chunk for, again, bringing some good info, really preparing for the show. Appreciate that here. Of course, all of you guys appreciate you being here live or watching after the fact. Of course, Splash Play, a community, uh, and I very much appreciate you guys being a part of that journey here, no matter what we're talking about. Uh, today is April Fool's, guys, so the, the prank here is I'm going to draft a bunch of running backs. I'm going to go... <laughs> no, there's no prank here. I just want to draft a good team, drafting out of the three-hole. Of course, a great spot to pick some wide receivers, and we're going to do that. Actually, have not gotten a lot of shares of this guy so far this year. I'm going to take Tyreek Hill. Uh, Tyreek, a guy that Really don't see anything threatening his situation. Nothing rookie-related as well for him coming in. Uh, Miami, we know what they have. They're going to be a Tyreek, Jalen Waddle team. Uh, they're also going to have Johnny Smith at tight end, theoretically taking a little more touches away than a Durham Smythe did last year. Besides that, Raheem Mostert, contract extended for him. So uh, the situation for Devon Achan fans out there, I still think it's the same thing it's been this entire offseason, but probably gives them a little bit more pause than they had before. Uh, but Mostert coming back for another couple of years, not a great contract or anything, but good enough for a guy like Mostert, who is in his 30s. Uh, definitely still guys could be involved, and we can definitely get him for cheap here later on. Shout out to the chat, though. See a bunch of names here already. Our guy Jeff, who is uh, in Asia right now, I believe. Or yeah, we're sorry, I think it's Asia. <laughs> Jeff in Asia can't draft best ball teams, but is still here hanging out. Appreciate that. Our guy Bindles. We got our guy Jay here. Uh, got Chunk here as well. Watch out for Janu and the like button appropriately smashed. Here's hoping for positive news from Miami investors. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's why I'm drafting Tyree Kill to, to suck up for them. But yeah, we'll talk more. Hopefully, I'll know more by the end of the week about how things are looking after I have a uh, one more demo day to go this week, and then we'll see if there's more in the next few weeks coming up. Uh, we'll be presenting on Thursday at the Philadelphia uh, Union, I believe is what that building is called, uh, which is apparently a fancy building. My, my in-laws were telling me yesterday, so I'll be dressed appropriately in my finest suit, which is getting dry clean. The same suit that I wore to Miami will be worn to Philly, so hopefully they'll respect the same as the Miami guys did. By my tan suit that makes me look so handsome, I think. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not the biggest suit guy in the world from what you see here every day on stream. Jerry Jones is going all in. All that's a resign, uh, re-sign Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, rumors. Uh, Fantasy Life newsletter written by our pal Pete Overzet uh, talking about that today. Dallas heavily linked to Zeke. Uh, both sides want the reunion there. I don't know that I buy that quite as much. Uh, definitely can, can happen. I'm not going to rule it out in terms of the probabilities we always talk about here about what's going to happen, what can happen. Uh, those two things don't necessarily always go hand in hand. Uh, but I think for a guy like Zeke, there is some smoke there, some concern. I just don't know how you go back from you lose Tony Pollard. You made your decision to go with Tony Pollard. You go back to Zeke, who looked okay in New England last year, but didn't look like he was adding anything special. It was kind of just a body getting a lot of work. Uh, so I don't know that I buy that one quite as much. If I'm Dallas, I'm a Dallas fan. I'd rather see him take a flyer on any back in this class, even and that includes Trey Benson. That includes Jonathan Brooks. That includes Audrey Gestime. I'd frankly like to see him take a shot with Bucky Irving, who I think can be, despite the lack of athleticism, can be maybe an elevated version of what Tony Pollard is, at least in our brains, if not in real life. Uh, but I don't know. Again, I've talked as well with Dallas. They can go with a full committee backfield, go with a bunch of cheap guys. I'm not buying the Zeke thing, even though I certainly, if you want to take him the 19th, 20th round right now, I'd get it. If he comes up to like the 150s, I'd personally be out unless he gets signed. But that's me. You know, may vary. Even if this team crashes, I won't leave the scene of the stream early. So Rasheed Rice, the big thing we have to talk about. Obviously, some rookies we'll talk about here coming up, though. Uh, nobody on the board I need to point out yet. Uh, Marvin Harris, when he comes up, he's the guy that's going to smash by week one, so you can put, uh, plan a flag for him. So Rasheed Rice, uh, again, if you didn't see the accident on video, it wasn't a great scene, basically entirely caused by the guys in Rasheed Rice's car. Also, apparently, video of them of him along with his friends fleeing the scene. Those are two bad things. That said, we have seen guys literally kill people in accidents before, and that gets you, you know, one year in the NFL. So don't think this materially affects Rasheed Rice too much. Probably means he loses a few games. But frankly, he should have been coming down in ADP anyway. This will probably make him come closer to where he should have been naturally, where uh, the Marquise Brown signing has not driven him down enough. I think he should be and should have been this entire time in the 30s to 40 range. If I had to guess, the risk of suspension probably drives him down a little bit more and and maybe make some better value, but a bad judgment call by a guy um, going into year two in the league for sure. And so a bunch of receivers on the board here. 0010 build is what we have going. 
Uh, Devontae Adams, a couple picks after EDP wouldn't be bad. DJ Moore has moved down. Of course, I don't ever mind bets on Chicago. I uh, probably a little bit light on Brandon Ayuk. I think I'm the most light though in Devontae Adams right now. So like he's not aligned naturally with where I'm picking in drafts very often. So we will add him in here. As a late second round pick, I really can't argue that. Uh, I think the one thing, if you're Gardner Minshew starting for the Raiders this year, the one thing you're going to have to do is feed Devontae Adams aggressively. So would I prefer to get Marvin Harrison? Do I find him to be a more fun pick? Yes, but I think at this spot, uh, Adams at pick 22, I'm happy to do it. And it does feel like here, zero RBs on the menu with this many receivers. Uh, room, a little bit RB piggy-ish with some of these guys here. So as a result, we are in a very clean wide receiver pocket. You know, Chris Olave, who I think is undervalued in sacks with Derek Carr. Derek Carr being used as a bailout guy a lot. Malik Neighbors, I love. Tank Dell, I like a lot. Mike Evans, I still like. Uh, Waddle makes sense with Tyree Kill. I probably like him the least out of all the guys uh, up here. Maybe Rasheed Rice would be the one. Um, I think this is a good spot for Olave. This is tough. I, I But Neighbors, I like the most. I'm taking Neighbors here. Neighbors is too fun. I think he can be great. Neighbors or Waddle. I love it. I'm happy to go Neighbors, I think. And prefer Neighbors over Waddle. I think that Neighbors more likely to get an outcome where he's going to be a wide receiver one, even if you want to say that Waddle and Neighbors' talents are similar, which I think wouldn't be a crazy thing to say. Uh, neighbors in college, I think, outperformed Waddle in basically every metric that I value. But Waddle does break slants, take him to the house. It's kind of what we're expecting Malik Neighbors to do, along with being a decent deep ball guy. Uh, but I prefer Neighbors over Waddle for this build. I don't know. I feel like people maybe aren't taking enough Miami doubles would be the one thing that I should have taken Waddle. But in terms of the pure talent, it was a much closer question for, for me, Olave, Neighbors, than it was Waddle. So that is what it is. Neighbors to the Giants would not make me feel great about this pick. I agree with that. Got Rashi at pick 50, so I had to take him. Yeah, if you're getting him in pick 50 in the big board, again, given how elevated he was, you guys have watched all of our streams all year long here. Of course, started the moment the big board off uh, open, and we've been going every day uh, doing drafts Monday to Friday, 11 a.m., at a certain point, Rasheed Rice was even getting drafted in the teens by some people, not you know, not the smart people who were letting him fall where they're supposed to. But Rasheed Rice is going so high where if you're getting him in the in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, I would absolutely scoop him up because especially in the big board where we're now, what are we, 70% filled, uh, if not a little bit more than that? I haven't checked recently. But let's see on another screen. Big board is... 77% filled. So in a tournament that's almost 80% filled, if you're getting Rasheed Rice at pick 50, uh, that's just a great pick. Like even if he gets suspended for half the year, it's a great pick because you're getting so unique compared to the rest of the tournament. So uh, definitely if he falls that level, I would take him pretty much every time. Six or seven of the Raiders, 12 conducted top 30 visits have been QB. Seems Minshew's guaranteed money may not be set in stone as a role for a starter. I suppose, but if they bring in one of the top six, seven guys, even if it's Penix, the situation's not going to get worse. So I think the baseline is that we're going to have a pretty good situation with Minshew, at least as it relates to Devontae Adams, at least as it relates to, uh, if we're going to assume it's Samir White, I think, you know, right now that'd be the assumption I would have. Madison not going to threaten him too much. Uh, I think a rookie, decent shot to go to the Raiders as well. But I would assume those guys, by having Minshew there, you're just going to have a better floor and a shot at a ceiling. If they bring in a Penix, I mean, for what it's worth, Penix, I thought, did show better athleticism than a guy who's 24, has had multiple knee injuries. So um, that's the guy I've seen linked to the most for them. I think Penix would be an okay outcome there. Uh, Penix, as I've talked about, just a pure air yards merchant, uh, was allowed to just chuck over and over and over again at Washington. Uh, wherever he goes, you have to hope they give him that same runway. And is that the Raiders with Luke Getze there? Uh, maybe not, but, you know. Either way, I think that for Devontae Adams' sake, I think he's safe no matter what. Big panics energy. Yeah, the people look, you're going to have a lot of fun with his name. I feel like um, in particular, uh, all the women, I feel like are going to, I've seen actually some jokes on social media about his name is Penix. It's like, okay, uh, very mature response there. But, you know, Penix to me, a player that uh, definitely for me would be QB6 in this draft, but QB6 still could be worse, quite frankly. And if we were the ones above him, um, obviously it would be uh, Caleb Williams. It would be Drake May. It would be Jaden Daniels. It would be JJ McCarthy. And for me, it would be Bo Nix. I would have Bo Nix safely ahead of Penix. Uh, Bo Nix can run an offense. Penix can throw the ball up in the air and hope things work out. I'd rather have a guy that can run an offense personally. Keenan Allen goes 44. Rasheed Rice, to answer that question here, goes at pick 40. So good discount on Rasheed Rice. I'd probably pull the trigger once you get past 40. So I think Reed Spencer here makes a good move. 
But I, if, again, if you get them at 50, like 50 is a no brainer. 40 is like, you maybe think about it a little bit. I'd be tempted to take Romo Dunze ahead of Rasheed Rice. I frankly think that's probably not a bad price tag even before Rasheed Rice crashed the car and committed a crime. Uh, so, but Rasheed Rice at 40, I don't hate it. Pretty big discount on Jalen. Why does this always happen in, in draft rooms I'm in? Pretty big discount on Jalen Hurts. Um, I think that's just it. That's the that's the end of the sentence. That's a stop point. I got to take Jalen Hurts here, 10 picks after ADP. Again, I don't know what's happening in my rooms, but I'm going to happily do it, I think. Also, I should make the, the board bigger. This is my bad. We had to change the screen around and have Chunk on because I don't usually have a, a two-person setup here these days, but here we go. Now we got a bigger board going for the big board. We'll see what happens in these next few picks. Would it shock you if in five years of Bo Nix ends up being the best QB in the class? Um, again, uh, with the pro-style offense thing. Um, best QB would be a shocker. First QB to win a championship, I think, would not be a shocker to me. If he lands in the right spot and a coach that knows how to use him well, uh, I think he can I think he can be Brock Purdy. I very much believe that, and he's better than Brock Purdy in terms of what he did in college. Uh, was hoping that Trey McBride would fall so I could try to play an Arizona thing for my second QB. But that's okay. We don't need to do it. Uh, Mari Cooper, a little bit of a discount. Pickens at ADP. Nothing screaming value here. Can really, can really dunk home QB. Because we're going against two of teams. We're going against Gardner Minshew teams. We're going against people not knowing Malik Neighbors. Let's do this. Let's do this. Why not? Why not? All right. Anthony Richardson, we're putting the jersey on for the second straight stream. AR coming home to a spag team here in the big board. Team so far, we'll give it a read. Jalen Hurts, Anthony Richardson, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors. That is it. Bo Nix, not a top six QB in the class. Great. What, what's your logic for that, Jaden? Please tell me what the logic is. Because I'll tell you the logic why he is. Uh, he, in terms of EPA metrics, led all the QBs in college football, which despite playing at Oregon, is a pretty fucking impressive thing to do. Uh, Jaden Daniels actually had a little bit better. 0.4 EPA per dropback, 0.44 EPA per dropback. For Jaden Daniels, 0.41 for Bo Nix. Bo Nix, also the most accurate QB in the class, 77% on target rate. Accuracy is a huge thing that converts well to pros. That's one thing that is sticky, doesn't change year to year. 88% catchable ball rate, also the highest in the class, would also be higher than everybody in the class last year, too. Bo Nix is a pro fucking QB who did a great job with everything he got handed last year. His one flaw doesn't throw it downfield that much. 10% deep ball rate, but still a 0.7 EPA there. He's not a willing deep ball thrower. He's not going to be as fantasy friendly from the jump as a Caleb Williams, as even maybe a Penix will be, a, let alone a Jane Daniels or Drake May. He's still a very competent pro QB, and people who like think this about Bo Nix, I think, is just it's not doing the research is really what it is. No disrespect, Jaden, one of our regulars here. Our guy Felix has pushed back and compared Bo Nix to Jake Locker before. Uh, it's just, uh, you got to look up Bo Nix, actually do your research on him, I think, if that's how you're coming up with him. Personally, that's it. AR and Spags are a better fit than my wife and I. Thank you. I hope so. I mean, you yeah, know, hopefully a little bit less sodomy going on between us. <laughs> Did watch Quiet on the set this weekend. So sodomy top of mind there. Really fucked up. <laughs> the entire thing. Um, the thing that's most, I guess not the most fucked up. There's a lot of things that are fucked up in that. The documentary, if you haven't seen, of course, about the Nickelodeon stars and whatever. Um, the fucked up part to me is how like Dan Schneider just seems like a bad boss, like a bad showrunner, like a lot of people in Hollywood was. Kind of seems messed up to conflate him with actual people committing crimes and pedophilia. But that's neither here nor there. I know I want to spend a lot of time dwelling on it, but really, if you do want to watch that one with Sydney and other, that's definitely the uh, that's a show to watch that'll get everybody on board. The nostalgia plus the true crime documentary thing uh, definitely hits some notes. Stop at two episodes. Yeah, the third episode is the one where it really goes off the chain. Uh, I, it was not my generation, but Drake and Josh, if you guys know Drake Bell, uh, Drake J Drake Bell apparently got like molested by a guy who worked at Nickelodeon. It's an awful story uh, as a teenager, like an awful, awful story. And then all of Hollywood came out to support the guy who worked for Nickelodeon because he was like in a lot of projects. So guys like James Marston, guys like who have like legitimate Hollywood names uh, supported this guy. And really, I'm not one of those you know Hollywood pedo conspiracy people. If you're ever going to buy into that conspiracy, this documentary will put you on that path because, like, it's crazy that 10 to 20 people of, like, note in Hollywood came out to support a guy who who fucked Drake in the butt. Like, that's, you know, like, it's not the it's not a good scene, man. It's not a good scene. 
But again, your eye test, and it's not disrespect to Jaden, but like for all of you guys out there, your eye test matters so little. Like that's not you as a person, but in general, most people's eye tests, unless you are somebody who's like a professional film grinder who maybe played the game or was taught by somebody who played the game and has broken it down, you shouldn't go off your eye test just for this. You go off the data, you back it up with your eye test, you try to land somewhere in the middle based upon that. But like Bo Nix, if you're telling me he's a bad QB, you didn't watch Bo Nix closely enough, and then you also haven't looked at the data at all. And that's a huge mistake. Great. We're going to count QB win results now. That's where we are. We're going to go in the exact opposite of what analytics are. We're going to go to the thing that has really very little correlation with QB performance. What was Pettix's record in the championship game? Are you going to still draft him off of that? Oof. Don't, don't, make me, don't make me start caping for Bo Nix, guys. All right. A couple picks coming up here. Going all running the gamut here, guys. And if you do enjoy conversation moving from uh, Nickelodeon documentaries to... <laughs> <laughs> to me yelling about Bo Nix, uh, making picks here. You're in the right place here on Splash Play. 2030 here. We need some more talent in. Definitely at wide receiver still because we stopped our run to take two elite QBs and put on a jersey. I still like Addison. Still think he's going to get an upgrade at QB no matter what. Addison will be my, my wide receiver four. There's going to be spike weeks there. Minnesota now tied decently to Drake May, to Jaden Daniels, uh, to J.J. McCarthy. Any of those outcomes are going to be good for that wide receiver room. And Jordan Addison not having Hawkinson for half the year, if not more, also going to be good for Addison. We've seen him have spike weeks last year. Situation's not getting worse. Addison's the play. There we go. Glad Chunk agrees with it. All right. I don't mind DeAndre Hopkins here again, buying in on Cincinnati uh, principles coming over to Tennessee. David Montgomery would also not be a bad pick here a little bit after ADP, but I really don't want to get boxed out at running back. But also I see a fun guy here can really make tight end look good. And I've been starving myself at tight end lately. So we're going to go Brock Bowers. Team so far, Jalen Hurts and AR at QB. Wide receiver, no running backs yet. Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, and Jordan Addison. Tight end Brock Bowers. I can do it. DeAndre would have been correlation with Indy. Would have been. We didn't do it, though. We'll see. Maybe he comes back to us. We'll figure it out. Uh, Nick to me is a high floor, low ceiling guy. Uh, that's fair. I, I think that... I would push back on low ceiling because if he lands in the right offense where he's just a vessel for great guys around him, he's going to be a lot better. But again, you can't have like a an on-target rate, catchable ball rate of 89%. Like he's going to make guys be able to be in position to make plays. And that is so important for the NFL. Like just being on time, being able to make reads quickly, decisive reads. I, You guys know, like I love the playground ball guys. Like Caleb Williams, I fell back in love with him watching some of this stuff, digging into his data, trying to find the things and ignoring, frankly, some flaws from this year. Like the fact that he wasn't on target as, as much. He handled pressure really poorly. All of that. Jaden Daniels, you guys know, uh, he's the best analytic QB this class, as I've compared uh, to before. He's Shroud and Anthony Richardson rolled into one. Uh, for Drake May, just a willing deep ball thrower, not the most accurate guy, so there's some flaws there. But fantasy-wise, he runs enough, he throws it deep. That'll be good for you. But for, like, pro QBs, we're going to be the guys that, like, maybe even a Shanahan tree kind of guy would like. Um it's McCarthy and Bo Nix. Like those guys are going to get the ball out on time. They're going to be professional with it. There's still enough athleticism in particular for McCarthy, but Nix is like not a terrible athlete either. Um, like these guys are just like legit QBs. And I think overlooking them because of some weird personal bias things is just like a huge flaw in process, but whatever you guys can make. The, you always, you all have to make your personal choices. I make mine here on stream every day. So you feel so strongly, then, you know, don't do it. It's not like I'm taking Bo Nix like crazy, but uh, he's got an outcome where he's going in the first 15 picks. So, you know, it's not, it's not out of the play at all. And definitely, I'd say first two rounds for, for Bo Nix. Struggle to see a scenario where Godwin pays off ADP. I would agree. Uh, I think you would need, I mean, you'd honestly need an Evans injury would probably be it. Uh, for Godwin, he's just not that guy. Definitely not a Baker Mayfield kind of receiver. Baker likes to chuck. Uh, that's what Baker does well. It's what he did well last year in that offense. I guess the hope would be with Tampa Bay losing Dave Canales that things get overhauled a little bit and maybe they look for that that check down guy a little bit more, that you know around the six guy a little bit more. But I don't know how why you would do that after you had such success last year. You know, being a downfield team, attacking, playing in the Baker strengths. Baker strengths are never going to be you know seven kind of air yards targets. It's going to be downfield and you know, hopefully moving around a little bit to get, make those plays downfield. So 
I agree that Godwin's ADP is tough. To me, he should be, I don't know. He should be in this JSN range, a little bit above him. All right. Pick coming up here. Pinning on Rattler using his analytics. He was a negative EPA per drop back guy. He's not a guy for me. I, I've been down on Rattler. I'm not, it hasn't changed. Rattler's like QB8, honestly. I would take a shot at Milton's pure arm talent over I would the more than I would Rattler. But but Milton also wasn't very good in college. All right, on the clock here. Raheem Mostert lines up perfectly. Oh, this is actually this draft. Making some sense here. A 2-1-4-1 build. We got Jalen Hurts, Anthony Richardson. So we're making a bet immediately against Tua, which I love because I don't even want Tua in my stacks, as I mentioned in a video last week. Uh, running back, we have Raheem Mostert, wide receiver Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addison, tight end Brock Bowers. If we can overcome the two early QB picks, this team is probably going to be one of my favorites, but we'll see. Obviously, wide receiver can get ugly. I think we might need to take one here. Frankly, could also use a running back here. Uh, some recent rumors linking Xavier Worthy to Indianapolis, which could be fun with AR's deep ball arm to have the fastest guy in football be on the team. Trey Benson, I still think makes sense. Zach Moss would help solidify this running back room more. What's what? What? Who am I as a human being? I'm the guy who takes a fun wide receiver five. I'm taking Xavier Worthy here. Here we go. Fastest man in football. Come on down. Team so far. Jalen Hurts and AR at QB. Raheem Mostert at running back. Wide receiver Tyreek. Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addis, Xavier Worthy. Tight end Brock Bowers. Jill Milton, arguably bad at football. I mean, Milton, for what it's worth, again, you want to talk about Rattler. Rattler, negative 0.03 EPA per drop back. Uh, Milton, at least, was a positive at 0.04. Some of that coming, I believe, with his rushing upside. But he, he at least was a positive. So I think for Milton, that's one thing you could say. He's got going for him. Milton, of course, also probably the strongest arm in the draft. Uh, but that's not enough for me. Again, it, it's like it's like I talk about with wide receiver. I think people are really, this year, trying to force in every receiver when, you know, like the lad McConkeys of the world uh, for our guy, Adam, for a lot of these receivers though, like there's so many good receivers in the top 200 picks. Why I've said this a million times. Why are we like obsessed with Jermaine Burton? Why are we obsessed with Javon Baker? Because there's already like 20 receivers you can go to ahead of him who are going to be in situations with better draft capital, the better shots have instant production. Um, I think that's one of the big mistakes people have. Uh, and Xavier Worthy is one of these guys where like, why would you take, you know, Burton, you know, whatever Baker, unless you're really thin at receiver, why would you take those guys? And you can take worthy who for whatever his flaws may be. I don't think he was great in college. He earned targets at an okay rate, about a 27%, 28% rate per out run. And also he's the fastest guy in football. So that's me. But QB again, QB and wide receiver, very parallel where you have a top of the class. That's so strong. Why try to talk yourself into Spencer Rattler? Like there's again, five, five guys, maybe six who are legit, very good. And going to go in the first round, if not the first 45 picks of the draft. Why would you go to Rattler? I, I just don't get it, but Rattler, not a good athlete too. No clear path opportunity. Year one, no rushing upside Rattler, probably not a good 20th round dart throw. I agree. It's just like, it's wanting a new toy is basically what Rattler is, especially in a draft like this. It's not like it's a draft of a bunch of mid guys. It's not a draft of like Kenny Pickett's who people were talking about in the chat earlier. It's just the guys who actually have really credible cases, really good pedigrees have been good in college football for years, have elite athletic comps. It's, I don't know. People want to squint their eyes because we're looking for the next Puka. That's it. And there's not always going to be the next Puka. Somebody, uh, somebody left me a YouTube comment asking like, Hey, can you go through the last three years of data to tell me the best 17th or 16th, 17th and 18th round picks? And I was like, no, a, you're not a paying customer. And that's a lot of work. And B like it, people want what happened last year. It's like, that hasn't happened every year. The year before last, one of the best late picks is Terrace Marshall. Cause he had five spike weeks or something uh, that actually would have made a roster for you. Uh, but then, you know, like that doesn't, that's not everything. And frankly, if you're trying to squint your eyes to find a Puka and Kyron, you're going to miss a lot of guys who can be a terrorist marshal. Um, so that's how that goes. Puka will never happen again. Part of why Puka will never happen again is because all these guys are now so steamed up where if a lad McConkie is in the one thirties, if, um, you know, anybody who's got any pedigree and has some, maybe some sneaky juice because they didn't get enough targets because they were in a competitive offense. Like lad comes to mind because of all those things it, like, that guy's going high enough now. He's not going at 200. So just there's no value there I'd really cling to. Uh, speaking of, I wouldn't mind Lad with this pick, but we need to make up at running back more. Brian Robinson, another report came out. He is definitely going to be the lead back for Washington. Eckler going to be the third down back. So Robinson to me just undervalued to pick 115 or 
or anywhere he's going to go in this range. And Robinson should probably be to me in like 90s. Should be closer to Zach Moss. I think he's probably ahead of these guys. I'd put him ahead of Zier, uh, Zamir White personally, at least right next to him. All right, one more pick coming up here. I won't get back to the chats. 2251 build. So we do have to continue to make it up at running back. Have to also hit wide receiver at good pockets later on. Like it at 122 here. So you can see the rookies who are good starting to come up really meaningfully. Uh, Lad and Leggett. That's uh, you guys who I was I was late on Lad, I was not late on Leggett. Uh, well, those guys are now getting priced, I would say, definitely accordingly. Uh, Singletary, lead back for the Giants. What does that do for you? Gus Edwards, potential more competition coming in. I think Singletary is a little bit undervalued. I'm going to go his way for my RB3. Maybe we'll luck box some NFC East correlation with Hertz versus Robinson or Singletary. Uh, team so far is a 2 3 5 1. We've got Jalen Hertz, AR at QB. Really, my favorite pairing at QB here. If you get him at reasonable price tags, we got the discount on Hertz, then dunked it home with AR a little bit before ADP. A running back, Raheem Mostert, Brian Robinson, Devin Singletary. Not a bad run at running back despite starting so late at pick 94. Wide receiver Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addison, and Xavier Worthy would love to have had one better wide receiver five above Worthy, but with where, where Worthy's going, like that's probably a decent wide receiver five. The tight ends, Brock Bowers. That's it. QB room is elite. Thank you. I agree. Uh, Joe Milton also won't play an NFL snap. I think he's more likely. I agree. I think he's more likely to be a guy, maybe gets on a practice squad in the NFL and then is in the UFL the year after that. And frankly, he'd crush in the UFL. But, you know, <laughs> new to the game. So you need to take two more QBs. Yeah, if you spend this much draft capital QB, make sure to pair on two more late. So you really can dunk home the position. But yes, no, I will not be taking even a third QB, let alone two more. Am I the only one who lost video? I, I hope so. I don't see anything here. Devin's too cheap. I agree. I'm not into Singletary, but in an offense that we know wants to run the ball and at one point last year gave Saquon Barkley 40 touches in a game. I'm happy to go to Singletary at this range. Uh, again, not the greatest landing spot in the world, but they paid him enough money. The opportunity is there. Singletary was good enough in an offense last year that actually had, you know, made it to the playoffs and he earned that role and beat out a guy for it. So uh, Singletary to me as part of a zero RB room, he's just one of the guys I'm willing to take in this range and we're doing it. Uh, any rookies here that I have to point out? Just to quickly go through here, guys that I think, as to hit the title of the video, rookies that I would expect to be really good from week one. Harrison, obviously one of them. Neighbors, I took him. Obviously another one. Uh, anybody else in this range? Brian Thomas, wherever he's going to be, I'd expect him to be one of them. Romo Dunze, I think he'll be ready to go from week one. Uh, Brian Thomas, by the way, was going to be my thumbnail guy before I saw that Pete also had Brian Thomas on his thumbnail uh, for his stream that he's doing today. So that's why I switched to the Rasheed Rice with a cop car for the record. But Brian Thomas to me, another guy with the draft capital, with his ability, freak athlete, a guy who also contributed a ton of touchdowns in college, obviously benefited from elite neighbors being there, but he's going to land in a similar situation, I think, where somebody's going to take the pressure off them. He can take the top off of defenses. Uh, Brian Thomas, great pick. Brock Bowers, another guy I expect week one. Really, these rookies in the first 70 picks, I think are all guys I would expect to be there in week one and be ready to go. Where I start to have questions is Adonai Mitchell range. I think he's got to come along a little bit more slowly. Uh, definitely some balls last year that were not the best. I think the underdog guys have a video out right now. i uh, talk about Adonai Mitchell and how he had to really make a lot of hero ball plays because of Quinn Ewers missing him. Uh, for the most part, Quinn Ewers is accurate enough last year that I don't really, I think that's, I think that's a film small sample size thing more than it is across the entire year. Uh, but if you want to give Adonai Mitchell more reason to like him, uh, that's one thing to add in is that Quinn Ewers on some plays is a little bit inaccurate, but I think the overall still look good enough. But to me, Mitchell is the cutoff in terms of rookies. Any rookie you take before Adonai Mitchell, I think you're going to get production week one. These guys coming after Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, um, Caleb, obviously, you know, the QBs we could put aside, but Trey Benson even, like I think these guys take a little bit more of a ramp up unless Benson ends up as the Cowboys lead back, and that's still an outcome that can happen. All right, next pick coming up here. We actually are landing in very clean running back pockets, which makes me happy. I've caped enough for Jerome Ford in the stream for an RB4 at this spot. Guy is going to, people, I guess, worried about Deonta Foreman taking away the goal line work again. We had Kareem Hunt taking away goal line work, and frankly, Kareem Hunt, I would say a better back, you know, in terms of the entire talent profile uh, than a guy like Deonta Foreman. So Ford, to me, at 142, when I need running backs, happy to do it. 
Uh, Brian Thomas being a team's wide receiver two is ideal for a MIMO. I think he'd struggle. I agree. I, I don't think he's the greatest route runner in the world, but if you have somebody who, again, underneath can take that pressure off, he's going to blow the top off of teams over and over again. Like that's where his biggest skill is going to be. But I would agree if you're trying to give him 10 targets a game, I just don't think he's that dude. He only had like a 23% target per route run rate in college, which, you know, when you have neighbors taking away 30%, that's not great, but you should have earned more. As I've said, that's my one critique, but then with the combine he put up, like to be that big of an athlete, to have the production he had, uh, that's the main thing there. Guy who, again, like a 0.7 EPA per target, I believe is where Thomas was. Yeah, 0.63 EPA per target was Brian Thomas last year. All right, on the clock again. We got the little bet on Minnesota, so it could make sense to take a Ty Chandler here and hope that we get the positive outcome uh, without Aaron Jones. It's not my favorite pock in the world. Marshawn Lloyd, I don't think is a week one guy necessarily. He can be, but I know that's a for sure thing. And I think we just need some production at this point. So I am going to take Ty Chandler here as my RB5. Just want to try to make up for starting running back so late. So it is a 2-5-5-1 build here. So we'll have some optionality to go wide receiver, to go tight end, to go running back, depending upon the best available value with our next picks. Jalen Hurts and AR at QB. Again, fantastic QB room. Uh, Raheem Mostert, Ryan Robinson, uh, Devin Singletary, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler at running back. So a zero RB room that I think works pretty well. Uh, good discounts too. We got one, two, two guys at basically 10 picks after ADP in this room. And this run I think is not bad. Uh, Tyreek, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addison, and Xavier Worthy at wide receiver at tight end Brock Bowers. Like the team. Uh, Justin Jefferson is also seems uh, wide receiver two turned out pretty good. Yeah, I, I think that Jefferson is a better targeter. I don't have those numbers in front of me. Uh, and then we got Adam here saying JJ is a much more polished player than Thomas. Yeah, I think to me, Brian Thomas is, well, Brian Thomas is complete athletic profile. Troy Franklin is really what he is. Um, he's a downfield guy. I could make the homeless Randy Moss comparison again. I think both those guys, to me, very similar players. Franklin, I think, is a better target earner, so I would say that that's the one thing that separates from Thomas. But Thomas is a better athlete who's probably going to be more ready to contribute physically in the pros from day one. Uh, so that's what I see the difference point would be, but I think those guys are very similar. And in this class, they're really the only two, I think, of that type who are like just downfield guys who are going to play out wide primarily. I guess Brendan Rice a little bit. The Brendan Rice is much slower. Pearsall, too. The Pearsall is working out of the slot a lot at Florida, actually, which I didn't realize. Yeah, and no, I think in terms of just like outside go ball kind of guys, in this class, it's Brian Thomas, it's Adonai Mitchell, it's Romo Dunze, and it's Troy Franklin. Those are your four guys. Everybody else, you expect to move around the formation a little bit more. Benson thinking, uh, dropped a lot of Benson thinking he's going to the Cowboys. That's fair. Uh, you know, I don't know that it's a lock or anything. I think Benson to the Chargers would also make a good amount of sense. He's frankly a much better athlete than a Blake Corum. And I think for everybody who wants to see the reunion between Harbaugh and Corum for the Chargers, Corum does a lot of things that I think are duplicative of Gus Edwards, whereas Benson at least uh, looked good as a pass catcher. So there's some sort of uh, differences there you could bring to a two-headed backfield. Uh, but Chargers also apparently kicked the tires on J.K. Dobbins. So a lot of things that could happen for the Chargers. But I think that Benson, to me, to the Chargers makes the most sense. And anybody going to Dallas, uh, like whoever gets that spot's going to be pretty valuable. But I think that could still be, you still have the out of that being an SMA, who I think is the best power back in the class. I'll die on that hill. All right, picks coming up here. We got this 2551 here. Can make the bet on the Dallas backfield. The Rico's going to come down if anybody gets added there. Antonio Gibson is coming up so much. And I think we can stick wide receiver by waiting a little bit more. So I'm going to go Antonio Gibson here as my. RB6, ambiguous backfield in New England, new coaching staff there. Gibson going to at least be the pass catcher as an improvement on Ramondre. Maybe a shot to earn more. Ramondre, to me, a guy that, again, as I mentioned, the year before last, he looked great in the 100s. Last year, did not want to take him even once in the 20s. Uh, ended up being right on that one. Obviously, you know, yeah, that's some luck boxing with that, I'm sure, uh, with him getting hurt down the stretch. But really, uh, this year, I think new coaching staff, ambiguous backfield, always want to take the second guy. Antonio Gibson's the second guy and the only one that the team acquired in the offseason. 
um, actually has some juice or, you know, theoretical juice. Loving the Gibson click this offseason. Look, I'm not a Gibson guy. I know. I think the public generally is too into Gibson because of the fact that he had one good game against Dallas three years ago, four years ago, and people cling to that forever. Uh, but Gibson getting the contract, new coaching staff, those are the reasons you buy in. Any ambiguity you want to buy in on for a guy who's cheap enough, and Gibson is cheap enough, especially for an RB6 for me right now. All right, so we kind of have a micro bet on the Giants right now. And I think with that in mind, I could go down and reach a little bit, but I'm actually just going to take Wandale here. I think Wandale's my wide receiver six makes sense. We saw him have spike weeks last year in a Giants offense that was mostly ass once they lost Daniel Jones and obviously was even more ass before him. Uh, but, you know, I would expect Jones to have gotten better in that offense as the year went on just because you can't be that bad forever um, and be a guy who's actually shown some flashes in the past. Uh, but Wandale, to me, being able to contribute there, some risk they bring in a Malik Neighbors. Um, if that's the case, this team may be a little bit duplicative, but we're definitely covering Giants spike weeks pretty well. So I'll give the team a read here. We have Jalen Hurts and AR at QB. Running back, Raheem Mostert, Ryan Robinson, Devin Singletary, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler, and Antonio Gibson. Wide receiver, Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addison, Xavier Worthy, and Wandale Robinson, and a tight end, Brock Bowers. I think I need to add some more volume at wide receiver just because of when we kind of stop the position. Always want to get five guys in the first 75 at wide receiver if I can. And because I deviated at QB, uh, that kind of weakened the team the way that I normally like to get. Uh, yeah, all the rumors I see are Brooks to the Cowboys. Brooks, too, uh, the guy who did his knee surgery is the Cowboys' lead athletic trainer or, or lead athletic doctor. So that's something that ties him to. Uh, I think that's still a decent outcome for sure. Uh, I think the Raiders one makes more sense because that way you have running backs who get you through the first month. For Dallas right now, they don't have guys that you really want to get you through that first month unless they're going to do like I would do and just go out with a you know complete uh, grouping of guys at running back without a real lead back and just see what you can do. But I don't think Dallas is wired like that. So that's the one thing that keeps Brooks away, I would guess. But maybe they think he can be ready week one, and then they just go in with Rico Dowdle and Malik Davis and maybe add Zeke too, and then you add Brooks. If you add Zeke and Brooks, I think that would make the ADPs kind of curious because I imagine people would flock to Zeke right away. Uh, but Brooks would probably be the better play for what we matter the most, uh, getting some playoffs and all that. Brooks is currently the Cowboys' only top 30 visit. Most teams still have about 75% of their interviews left, though. Probably bringing more running backs. Yeah, I think that's it. I think if they do bring Zeke back, it's probably Zeke plus a rookie. If they don't bring Zeke back, they might be waiting for one more cut post-draft just to see if there's anybody else that gets out there. Uh, but, you know, Dallas has still got a lot of flexibility, and that is the one spot that's floating around out there. Besides maybe the Raiders, I know people are locking in Zamir White a bit more than me. Um, but I think Dallas and the Raiders are the two right now where like that can get meaningfully upset, I think. Mm -hmm. And reading the chats here. Haven't done the plugs, guys. Uh, please do subscribe down below. Please hit that like button again. Splash play new drafts Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. Every day here. Uh, one of these days coming up, we're doing a marathon stream as well because uh, I do have to make up for the drafts I missed last week. The two that I missed last week while uh, doing meetings for probably. So hit that like button. Subscribe here. Of course, your likes matter a lot here. This is basically one of my, my full-time job is this and my sports betting app probably. So your likes, your matter a lot to get seen by more people. People like you who enjoy this kind of content. That's really the main thing here. So uh, please subscribe. Underdog as well. Promo code Splash. If you want to double your deposit to 100 bucks. And of course, Stochastic. MLB, again, hot in the streets right now. The Sims, by the way, they they had two winners this weekend. I think one guy over 100K, a guy who I actually know, uh, Peter Hanley, uh, who follows me on Twitter, 50K uh, as well, I think this weekend. Actually, it might have been 75K. But like they basically won like 150 to 200K over the weekend from the Sims. Really can't advocate enough. If you just want something to do, if you want something to get, get in, frankly, UFL, DFS is going to be gone pretty quickly, I think, because uh, tournament prize pool is very tough to fill week one. It's already down for week two. So really, MLB is the one you want to hit, and I would really recommend it. Even if you're just doing the $4.20 max, the Sims products will make your life better, give you a better shot at being live to win something. So check it out on Stochastic uh, with the promo code SPLASH. Pick coming up in a few here. Let's see what we do. Feeling pretty good at running back now. Could still add one more, but honestly don't know that I need to. Kind of thinking wide receiver depth is the move. Need to get a few more tight ends as well, but we'll figure it out. 
He shouts Steel City Blue, a new member. And Steel City is his first time. So, Steel City, welcome to the family here, of course, on Splash Play. The family grows every day. More people to bring in and share meatballs with, like Lady and the Tramp. But welcome here to the family. We appreciate you supporting the show here. And, of course, you too could support for $4.99 a month. Hit that join button down below. Helps. I'm The hat's off, so I shouldn't keep doing the voice. <laughs> Hit that join button, though, four ninety nine a month. Uh, Malachi Corley still on the board. Malachi Corley getting top visits everywhere. So he is a guy I don't mind for a wide receiver seven. Do you like Tez Walker more as a player, as a go ball guy? I think we can get both. I'm going to go Malachi Corley first. Corley, basically duplicative of Wandale Robinson. They're the same player functionally. Uh, just guys who are going to be low A dot guys, guys who hopefully can make it up in terms of volume. Corley, a better target earner in terms of the volume. I think uh, had the highest target per route run rate in the class. Yeah, 35% target per route run rate for him. The only guy he's behind is Johnny Wilson, who ran a lot less routes. So that's the benefit for Corley. The downside is he's pretty small. The downside is he's also a guy that is going to be, again, close to the line of scrimmage, not going to get downfield as much, at least based on what he did at Kentucky or Western Kentucky um, in college. So uh, but I think these guys are very similar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Steel City. I appreciate it, man. Glad to have you on board. Always glad to see new names here becoming regulars. Uh, brings a lot of joy to me, so... Thank you guys for being on board here, and thank you for the support. Of course, the reading of names coming up here at the end of the video, too, because I didn't get to do it on Friday with the updated one. So uh, reading of names coming up at the end if you do enjoy me reading names and reading your name in particular. Uh, okay, 2671. All right, so Bucky got dusted athletically. Miles Sanders, I did skip over Chuba. That is still a competitive backfield, one where theoretically both guys are going to be trying to win a role. Uh, Noah Fant would make me feel a little bit better at tight end with only Brock Bowers. We've talked about this Cowboys spot too much. I just feel like Audrick Estime being the Cowboys back would make him soar up a hundred spots. Really? Like if there's nobody else added there who matters, and it's just Audrick Estime. He is going, he would score 12 to 16 touchdowns for the Cowboys this year. I would make that bet right now. Of course, it's a contingent bet that he has to be on the Cowboys to accomplish that. He would score 12 to 16 touchdowns in the Cowboys, just feasting off of whatever that offense gives him, feasting off of CeeDee Lamb getting the ball downfield, maybe a Brian Thomas being added and being another guy who gets downfield or Troy Franklin or whatever, another outside receiver to replace those Michael Gallup snaps that were awful last year. Uh, I think that Estime has some outs still. At almost 200, I'm happy to take him as my RB7. Oh, that's a tough one. Johnny Lawrence Cage with 2.0 Wilson. Uh, I got to say, a lot of people who are the film watchers that I trust out there have been talking about jo uh, about Johnny Wilson a little bit more. And they say that you don't see any tight end when you watch him play. I can tell you analytically, I didn't see any tight end. I have questions about the size. It's hard to be 6'7 and play wide receiver for every snap. Uh, I talked about last year with Darnell Washington. He was playing tight end. and He still didn't get, you know, free with his air, so he kind of had a blocker. But still, like, you have a guy that big, they get chipped the knees a lot. It worries you. But Wilson was good enough in college, and for everybody who wants to jerk off Keon Coleman, uh, Johnny Wilson was actually good in that offense. Keon Coleman was not, analytically. So I think Johnny Wilson's got something to him. But I didn't take him today, so it's on me. Frankly, I'm not taking enough Johnny Wilson. Everybody has spooked me on Johnny Wilson enough, and he's the one guy that I feel something for that I just don't take, and that frankly could be a mistake by me. I'd rather have Johnny Wilson over Jalen McMillan, personally. But that's me. Um, other guys here who have a shot to be good week one, by the way, I do think Corley has a shot to be good week one because he does kind of typify a position that a lot of teams want. Um, and also like a, his versatility in terms of being a close to the line of scrimmage guy, like I think is things that teams will chase. There's a reason he has a lot of visits with teams right now, even though he didn't run at the combine, which would have been the one thing if Corley ran at the combine and did as well as a Roman Wilson did as well as a lad McConkie, as well as all those guys, let alone as good as a Brian Thomas. Uh, he probably would have soared up a bunch. So, Malachi is one of those guys that I think he and Tez Walker in particular right here, two guys who showed enough. Tez showed a lot athletically and Corley, different things they represent. Tez more of a Brian Thomas kind of receiver who you expect to be a boundary guy going downfield. Um, he led the uh, NCAA, all the guys who were coming to this class in the NFL um, in air yards last year because of the fact that he was just getting fed a lot by Drake May downfield. Uh, but I think that might be a skill more than I gave credit to earlier in the draft process. And the fact he's a good athlete is really the main thing. Like, you got that many air yards, you're a great athlete. Uh, Tez Walker, I think, has a shot to be somebody's consolation prize when they don't get Thomas, when they don't get Troy Franklin. I think Tez can be that guy who's maybe somebody's 
bronze medal, basically. I, I don't have that in front of me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have every number in the world in front of me. But Sports Info Solutions is what I use for everything. You can go back and look at it. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but maybe if you're, maybe I'll put it in the pre, actually, I'll put it in the squirt squad discord. I'll look that up after the show, but I, I don't, you know, it's not that deep. He's very good. So, like, <laughs> yeah. You're not going to find one-to-one -one comparisons for these things. I would try to stop doing that if that's like the process. Team didn't crash. Therefore I didn't leave the scene of the stream there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I did not, did not Rashid Rice this one up. If you guys didn't see that video, by the way, uh, again, he didn't do a rugs. He didn't do a Dante Stallworth. You know, nobody, thank God, nobody got seriously injured by that. But man, that could have been real bad. That could have been real bad. And that was all on his guys driving that car. Watch the video if you want to. Got to guess he gets him a few games suspension. 2771 here. Bled out at tight end besides Brock Bowers, which is okay because we're, we're treating Brock Bowers like an elite tight end. This honestly might be the kind of build to take a shot on Darren Waller not retiring might also be one to take a shot on Jelani Woods' hamstring being recovered. Oh boy. What a, what a pocket here. Oh, I don't, I really don't like either option. <laughs> I really don't. Oh fuck. All right. I'm going to go Darren Waller. I'm going to go Darren Waller. Probably should be a fort. No, well, it's got to be at least three because of the, the possibility of Waller retiring. But I have such a bet on the Giants. That's why I'm adding Waller in. Don't love it. Uh, the Discord, you have to be a paying member here, Adam. So, but it is uh, basically if you sync your YouTube account to your Discord and you're a paying member, you'll get added to the to Pete's Discord, I think, overall, and then also our channel on there, uh, which is just for members. Uh, okay. More picks here. Do I just get the third tight end now? Really don't like Tucker Craft enough at all, honestly. I'm going to take Jelani here and just close out my tight end room. Really don't feel great about tight end two and tight end three, which are going to be the biggest flaws of the team for sure. Uh, Jalen Hurts and AR at QB, running back Raheem Mostert, Brian Robinson, Devin Singletary, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler, Antonio Gibson, Audric Estime. So seven running back room here, but for a zero RB team that started pick 94, probably one of my favorite zero RB rooms, even though we're definitely making some bets on guys that are not sure things. Ty Chandler, Antonio Gibson, uh, really I mean, nothing is a sure thing, obviously, but in particular, those guys, not sure things. Uh, Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addison, Xavier Worthy, Wandale Robinson, Malachi Corley, a wide receiver, then a tight end, Brock Bowers, Darren Waller, and Jelani Woods. <sighs> Brock Bowers is carrying the water for us at tight end, so we don't need a tight end four. Would rather add a wide receiver eight, I think, but we'll have flexibility for our last pick in round 20. Saw so Bowers to the Bengals mock would be. I mean, that'd be fun. Probably would immediately ruin Mike Kosicki, but that would be a fun one. Like that was the initial outcome that seemed like the most fun one. Signing Kosicki made me think they're not going to go that way. Still think Bowers to the Jets most likely. Bowers to the Colts also still alive. Uh, but, you know, eh. Probably should have taken Brendan Rice with that last pick instead of Jelani Woods. Brendan Rice, I've talked about just at this range. One of few good picks left. Uh, Johnny Wilson, another one. Again, we talked about enough about him earlier. He's the better version of Keon Coleman in that offense. Think Bagels run to the podium if he's there. Maybe. They have they have enough needs, though. I don't know that I would. With what they got out of Tanner Hudson last year, I don't know that I'd be dying to spend huge draft capital at tight end, even though I think fantasy-wise it's the most fun. I, I think they need enough things on defense, on offensive line, on defensive line. And like they got they got a lot of holes that are really germane to the overall football team that I wouldn't assume a fantasy-friendly play going there. The Jets go well. They, I mean, that's part of why I think they went Mike Williams to have the flexibility. But if Bowers falls in their lap and you have a guy that and you have Aaron Rodgers maybe caping for him a little bit as a guy who he can trust to be another short, close to the line of scrimmage safety valve, I think that Bowers would be a strong play for the Jets. I also think that Bowers, if he goes to the Jets, really meaningfully fucks things up for both Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, who are going right now that first, second round and have not taken a drop at all for Mike Williams going there. If you add in Brock Bowers, a guy who's going to take away some of those cheap little targets that uh, Brees Hall got last year, going to take away any targets from Garrett Wilson who needs every single target to go his way to have upside. Uh, I think that Jets offensive situation can be a lot better in terms of talent 
but uh, can be like really ugly fantasy wise for those guys going first, second round. Don't think Bowers and Rogers would get along. Yeah, maybe. I mean, look, that happens a lot of football teams to be clear, but maybe. Bowers thoughts on tower seven is directly correlated to the target mark. Yeah. I mean, that's what he asked, right? Like, didn't he immediately go to a team? Is like, so what do you guys think about conspiracy theories? <laughs> Like, what do you think about 9-11? I don't know. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is a very particular kind of guy. I'm sure also crushed uh, by not being uh, the Kennedy's <laughs> VB candidate this year. Hopefully you can recover in time for football season from that emotional pain. All right. 2773 here again. We could do, go tight end four because one of our guys might retire. Frankly, both these guys, both Jelani Woods and Darren Waller are alive to retire. <laughs> I think it's entirely possible. So I don't hate taking a fourth tight end. An eighth wide receiver would be okay too. I don't know that we need it. Like if we're going to make the bet on worthy at ADP, like he should be a guy that I'm not treating as a total zero. Could also do run back Alec Pierce one more year here. But I think, uh, so, okay. Kraft goes, would have considered taking Kraft. All right, do we do we just condiment and take Daniel Bellinger too? So no matter what, I'm getting Giants tight end production. Colby Parkinson undervalued. Davis Allen I like more, but Parkinson got the free agent money too. I'm going to go Parkinson because we know he's going to be on the team. We know they paid big money to him. We know he's going to give me some production. I think that's a better move. All right, so Chunk was thinking it too. I think Bellinger could have made sense, but I don't want to make a bet that's like like – a double bet on Giants tight end feels pretty bad to me. Uh, so final team here, which I'm going to have to go to the other screen to read because I assume this is going to end. Here we go. All right, my final team here. You can see I labeled this one with Chunk because, of course, Chunk being the guest host on Friday will split the prize pool with Chunk and we do end up winning this one somehow. Final team here is a 2774. Jalen Hurts and AR. So Jalen Hurts we did go unstacked with, which... Frankly, I'm getting more comfortable with as we go because I just want to make tournament plays against A.J. Brown, against Devontae Smith, and I'm very comfortable doing that. Jalen Hurts, A.R., Raheem Mostert, Brian Robinson, Devin Singletary, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler, Antonio Gibson, Audric Estime. If you don't start RB early, you make up with it in volume, and I think this running back room is probably one of the better examples of that. Wide receiver, Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Addison, Xavier Worthy, Wandale Robinson, Malachi Corley. The one thing I would say is I would feel more comfortable getting one more wide receiver in here. With where we spent capital, we did have four picks in the first 70 that were wide receiver, five in the first 100 that were wide receiver. I probably should be more comfortable with that being a seven wide receiver build. So that's part of why here I wanted more at tight end. Obviously didn't draft it a ton with early capital besides Brock Bowers. So that's my logic. But tight end Brock Bowers is still that elite tight end range. So I probably didn't need to do four, but I did do it. Darren Waller, Jelani Woods, Colby Parkinson. To me, these three are just the guy with Waller having the worst out of being retired. Uh, but that is it. So there we go, guys. And some kind words here. Chunk rocks. Yes, if you missed the Friday stream, check it out here. Not only just to show some love for our guy Chunk, but also because he added a lot of great tidbits as well. Talked to me about college football DFS. Um, helped kind of give me some social proofing on some things I was thinking. Really enjoyed talking with Chunk on Friday. I was very happy with how that stream went uh, for our first guest hosting spot. So go check it out with Chunk. Uh, the last stream here, uh, it'll be draft number 42 for me, as you can see on the board. Of course, Splash Play marches on here with drafts every day, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. So please do subscribe down below. Please hit that like button. Leave a comment if you're watching after the fact. Even if it's just an emoji, it does help out here with the algorithm. And that's really the main goal here to, to please the YouTube masters so we get seen by more people. Get the views up, get the money up, get more people on here like Chunk, like you guys out there. And of course, leave five stars and review for my app. Probably if you saw Chunk's performance on Friday and you thought, I want to be on the stream too, you do that. Go check the app store for probably. I'll leave it in the pinned comments too. Leave us five stars and a review, and we'll be answered to win our next giveaway of a guest hosting spot on Splash Play coming up the middle half of April. So I guess, excuse me, in about two weeks. Uh, so come here then and leave uh, leave five stars and a review now, and you'll find out if you're the next one up for a guest hosting spot. Stochastic, 15% off or, or 50%, what was it? <laughs> Whatever it is on the screen. Uh, that's what you're getting off there on Stochastic. Uh, make sure to go check link in the description too or use promo code SPLASH on there. But I really would recommend it for MLB Sims, um, golf as well. Uh, great data really to help you get in, get it in good for DFS, especially if you're not playing basketball, not playing football right now. These other sports just don't have enough Sim tools out there, enough people using them. So really my full recommendation for that. And now the reading of names. Uh, is there something like Easter related uh, I can do for this? <laughs> April Fool. I'll read this. It's April Fool's Day, right? I'll read this like a fool. Robert Griffin the turd. 
Is that how a fool would read things? <laughs> I think so. Historical anomalies, Matthew Emerson, Tyler, CLN, Matt, Rupesh, uh, Willis, Ivan, Rod B. Throbin, Port, Tony, I feel like I'm now getting ghoulish uh, instead of more clown. Do, 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 do. Tony Mark, aka Mark, aka Io, Rob Van Natten, Brandon Wagner, silly, silly fool, consigliere. <laughs> Aaron D. I'm, this is one of the worst ones. Nez, Jake Twitchell. I'm just moving my hands a lot. Fools don't move their hands a lot. <laughs> Jake Twitchell, fucking alpha, Mr. Mister. Sammy Telesco, duh. I am the KY. I, I, not for Sammy. I'm just doing duh because I'm a fool. I am the KY. Kevin Castro, Lateralis, Logical Goddess, or Short Gamer, Carlos, Felix, Al Paul, Chunk, Spurious News, Game Davis, Bindles, Christopher Leclerc, question mark, Frank Evans, Nolan, Thomas Schultz, Laces Out, Kent Lewis, Kyler, John. Jonathan, M for Life, J, Jaden, Recipes with Reed, Wounded Geese, Beast Birth, Bride of Fred Bologna Sandwich, Wabi, Galen, Tanner, Paul V, The Two Jeffs, Jeff C and Jeff F, Craig B, Jason F, and Michael Thomas, the fool of them all. Woo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry the paying members. <laughs> I didn't have a good one today, and I always improvise at last minute, and that... <laughs> That was that's the dark side of improv. That's the uh, that's the Nickelodeon documentary series on improv. <laughs> Less butt fucking, but similar, <laughs> similarly poor performances. <laughs> I guess is what we'll call it. I'm just gonna pull the plug here before I get myself canceled for the umpteen time. So come back tomorrow, another draft, 11 a.m. Of course, new drafts Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. So come along for that ride. Appreciate you guys being with me again. Game responsibly too. I don't pull this up enough, but it is an important thing. Uh, don't get above your skis with gambling. It's always the important thing for all of you guys out there. And, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Back tomorrow with more. See you guys then. Enjoy your days. Don't be a fool. Ooh. <laughs> Good luck. Bye.